Almost forgot to light you. Little fucker. Oh, hello. <laughs> Didn't see you there. Surprised me. Um, yes, it's that time once more where we uh, flop a few books out, some new ones. So I've got eight to show you today. Uh, mixed bag, we've got some fantasy and we've got a bit of science fiction and we've got something else, a children's book actually, uh, from the 70s. Um, right, um, so, right, we've got the bells. We've got the Satanic Candle Hall of Flicker, as usual. We've got the Satanic Mushrooms and we've got a bit of Bishop's Finger. It's my go-to ale when I'm trying to save some money. It's the cheapest one I could find that had a decent, uh, well, the, that I knew would be a decent brew, shall we say. Let's put that down with its fellows and uh, cheers. Hmm. Oh, lovely. Oh, Kentish Strong Ale. Hmm. Oh, it's quite lovely. Anyway, let's not get carried away. I'll have a little bit more of that later. So there will be the usual sniffing, but not quite as intensely as normal just because of my um, the recent bout of um, chest infections. Definitely nothing to do with the vape. <clears throat> <laughs> it's all these uh, books I'm sniffing. Anyway, let's turf them out. So the first one is rather special. Now, do you all recall that book I reviewed? Iando Binder's, what was it, Night of the Sources? Had quite a lovely cover. I quite liked it. Well, this is the first book because that was the sequel. I read them out of order. Look at this fine cover. And that's the, uh, that's Fane, isn't it? The uh, the strapping, <laughs> square-jawed American chap who uh, biffs all the uh, aliens out of the way. Um, it, it's quite nice. It came from um, a private seller on um, eBay and came with this protective uh, film. I never keep those. I prefer my books to uh, absorb as many smells as possible. But isn't that a lovely cover? I mean, there's some um, foxing here. I don't think that's part of the design. I don't think so. And it's, yeah, it's a little bit buckled in places. But yeah, very similar to the other one. I haven't got the other I've, I've stored it away. Uh, but anyway, let's see what Fane's up to in the first book. War of the Sources. Smith was a writer of science fiction stories. Now, incredibly, he was witnessing the real thing. Travelling silently at immense speed, its mirrored sides flashing, the saucer swooped in for a landing on Earth. Then, as he watched, another saucer appeared in the sky, and the dogfight began. Aliens from beyond known space were battling for control of Earth. The hell's this Smith nonsense? It's called Fane, isn't he? Unless it's a different chap. No, look at that. It begins there. Um, it's a little insight there. A close encounter. Fane jerked around. Smith? Uh, Fane Smith, perhaps. Okay, so the other one was from 72. Okay, it's in Roman numer numerals again. Uh, I'm going to say that's uh, 70, 70. Maybe. But it's in very good condition, despite the, um, the the mild battering it's received on the outside. And unfortunately, no hidden banknotes or anything like that. Naughty, naughty. But yeah, quite nice. Anyway, check out Fane on the cover. I was going to move my bottle out of the way then for the uh, scan. Completely losing it today. Anyway, you um, have a look at the uh, scan and I'll, um, I'll have a sniff of this. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, it's, it's a very, it's a deep, very deep uh, scent. Um, we haven't come across this for a long time. Yeah, it's, um, it's wood. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm looking forward to reading that one. Yeah. The second one was so bad, it was, it was good. And um, the action scenes were incredible in featuring um, Fane's uh, meaty fists dealing out justice. But it'd be nice to see if there's a backstory as to how he became such a judo-kicking motherfucker. Okay, the next one. 
So this is this was recommended to me by my old friend Aaron Timbrell from when we studied together uh, fine art in uh, Plymouth uh, College of Art, and he recommended this book to me. It's his favourite book, or one of his favourite books. He said. Um, so this has been there's lots of uh, different editions of this book. Um, and I went for one, uh, a slightly more vintage one. This is from the 70s. And quite a haunting image, that, isn't it, of this young girl? Um, yeah, so I've actually already read this, but I won't talk about it too much because I will review it at some point. Uh, but by Alan Garner. Never read anything by him. I think, ostensibly, it is a children's book, but after reading it, I think it's it's rather more aimed at adults, I would say. I mean, if I had read that as a child, it would have scarred me for life, I imagine. <laughs> but anyway, let's have a look at this blurb. Uh, has anyone heard of this, by the way, The Owl Service? I really, I really enjoyed it, actually. Okay, let's go for this. Scratchings in the loft above Alison's room, not mice or rats, but claws being sharpened. Then Roger had felt himself reeling under the scream and the vibration of the ancient rock. And Alison was obsessed with those plates. She did nothing but trace the owl pattern on them. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it's giving me problems. Gwyn couldn't fathom it yet, but he was trapped too in the Welsh Valley and its legend. Only old half-mad Hugh knew the power of the ancient tragedy of a maiden made of flowers who betrayed her husband, Liu, with a lover. And Hugh told Gwyn that now the lady had come again. She wants to be flowers, but you make her owls. You must not complain then if she goes hunting. Liu, blue and weld, wed, and Gwynud Pid... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm butchering the hell out of this. Sorry if there's any Welsh people listening. Uh, they are the free who suffer every time, for in them the power of this valley is contained, and through them the power is loosed. Alison, Roger, and Gwyn had become those free. So... This blurb doesn't really do it justice. In fact, it's quite confusing if you read the blurb. Um, and I was a little confused in the reading, I must say. Um, but I'll, t I'll talk about that in the in the review. Um, yeah, I, I got it just because I love the cover, really, the cover image. I think it's perhaps slightly bleached, I don't know. But interestingly, the, the light sourcing on her face, that must have been an utter nightmare. It's quite a hard thing to paint, I would say because you've got the light source coming from both sides, but slightly from behind. So it's causing these unusual shadows to appear on the chin and the face. But it makes it quite an interesting image, doesn't it? Uh, but then anyway, there we are. So we've got a little biro line here. I always like to see a little artifact uh, within the fr uh, front of a book, ideally some uh, lettering. Um, the only thing I'd say about this particular edition, so this is from 75, Looks like it was originally um, copyrighted at 67 there. The only problem is the the gutter is, it's been bound too far down. So you can see it's clipping, especially at the beginnings, it's clipping the the words there. So you've got to really pull it to, uh, to get, pop those words out. And you can see the person before had the same problem. So they've tried to bend the spine back a bit. Again, a bit of uh, book archaeology there, which I really like. I've already read this, so there's no hidden secrets. But anyway, cast your eyes over that um, cover. Don't get too scared. And um, I'm going to sniff it. I've already I've been sniffing this for a while because I've been reading it. Oh, bloody hell. Let's have some ale. Hmm. It's not going to help, but... Yeah... Mmm, obviously it's wood, but it's it's got that, um, it's church pew again, it's, it always rears its ugly head, but I quite like the smell, personally. Mmm, oh that's, that's bloody lovely. Right, okay, pressing on. Right, so you might have seen my review of, what is it, Beyond Tomorrow. Uh, back along. Um, this was one of the authors that I really liked, Gordon R. Dixon. Uh, the short story was uh, Call Him Lord, I believe, that one. So I just thought I'd take a punt and get another one of his books. Uh, this is a, this is fantasy fair, I imagine. I mean, it's got a, 
I didn't really look into it. I just bought it on the strength of the cover. I did always like a piece of uh, pseudo parchment uh, as the title. Um, and we've got some knights and we've got a nice coastal uh, scene here. Quite a thick book. But what's this? Hmm. I do suffer from, um, we t suffer from dust mites here. I call them my pets because they tend to scamper all over my books. Sometimes I kill them, sometimes I spare them. Um, but yeah, I think they're eating my books. Uh, the spine has been rogered slightly. It's, uh, it's been well read, but that's a good sign. Uh, the, the cover design covers um, continues on the back. And we've got a hawk of some description. No idea what that is. Okay, The Triumphant Return of the Dragon Knight. So this is a sequel. Cover illustration by Mark Salowski. Sawalski. Um, okay, know nothing about this. If you happen to, let me know. Is it worth reading? So, by the same author, The Dragon and the George and The Dragon Knight. I hope this is the same author. I imagine it is, but it hasn't got any of his... I'm sure he does science fiction as well. Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, nothing, no secrets, no secrets. No, no. Okay, anyway. Right, no back matter either. Cast your eyes over that fine fellow. And um, I'll do the old flicking. Oh, this is different. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, yeah. Elementary. So that one's wood, of course but sheathed in creosote. Make of that what you will. Family favourite. I walked past um, a telegraph pole earlier, actually, and I got a wonderful whiff of um, creosote off it. Absolutely love the smell of creosote. I don't know why. I think it's because my dad, when he was... Um, He's working on the like school fields. He would mark out the football pitches and uh, the race tracks, and you'd use creosote. And I think I remember it from then. Um, yeah, it's probably quite potent stuff, isn't it? But uh, there we are. Um, right, next, we've got some Robert Silverberg. Now, I just purchased this on a whim. It was going quite cheap. Just a single book. It wasn't part of a, um, a job lot or anything like that. And I liked the image. Sorry, I don't know why I went up there. So, yes, who knows what's going on there? I mean, it conjures certain things in my mind that perhaps this poor chap was being rogered by a giant bird and then they both died in the act of love. And he's pinning him down with his great big beak. But I'm sure it's nothing like that. But it's quite a, quite a disturbing image at the same time. But really beautifully rendered. I really love this background, this blue that's really kicking you in the face. Nebula Award winning novel by all accounts. And never heard of it. <laughs> that's, n that's nothing uh, new for me. It's a panther science fiction. The spine is pretty nice. I've just got a single line right down the equator, but you can't probably see that. Okay, let's, let's read this one. Right, you probably can't see that, can you? I've got my camera. My camera's slightly better today, I don't know why. Uh, Messiah of Self-Bearing. On the planet Borfan, Kinnel Darivel, Prince of Sala, never doubted the self-effacing customs of his society, where the use of I, me, and myself is considered foul obscenity. But one day he meets the wandering earthman, Scheit Schweiss, who lures him along forbidden paths with a weird mind-expanding drug. This drug opens the minds of users to one another, and Kinnell realises he must convert his people to the cardinal sin of self-bearing. <laughs> it's going to be self-abuse then. But treachery and envious ambition intervene, and Kinnell is forced to flee for his life. Hmm, okay. Ah! Okay, it's by Bruce Penning. Uh, <laughs> I said Penisington. Bruce Pennington. Um, I've definitely got a problem. Okay, let's have a look here. 1975. But the copyright seems to go back to 71. Hmm, interesting. It's a very nice condition inside. It's all tickety boo. But again, nothing, no secrets. We've got some other books available there at the back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cast dries over there. 
I wonder if it does bear any relation to the actual story itself. That image. Ooh. Oh dear. This one's different again. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, disinfectant. I find, um, uh, yeah, old school disinfectant. There's certainly, there's, there's notes that, that, um, that persist with these books. There's a set palette, as I see it. Okay, right, for the last four, we're in for a vance -a We've got four Jack Vances. So this is on the, uh, on the, um, on the back of my Vance Bonanza. I got a bit frisky and ordered a load more. So this one, I believe it was said to be in good condition. Do you consider this good condition? I don't think so. But anyway, I, I, I don't think it was that expensive. Okay, so this is a sequel. So Durden, Durdane, book two, The Battle for Survival, The Brave Free Men. I don't know anything about this. Perhaps you do. I'm sure some of you do. Um, so we've, you know, we seem to have a mixture here of, um, it looks like he's got a, some kind of, it looks like a modern weapon, but it could also be a crossbow perhaps. And he seems to be dressed in uh, older gear. And then he's got these um, lenticular UFOs in the background. Um, okay, spine is not too bad considering we've got this bla blasted rip in it. I won't read the blurb because it's, a, it's a sequel. But yeah, is this worth reading? Let me know. Quite a large um, typeface, um, a large font size. I, I do quite like that. Oh, hello, we've got a little tick there. Someone's put a tick. What does that mean? Hmm. Okay, 1972. I oh, know, no, 75, this one. Coronet books, yeah. Lovely. Okay, have a look at that cover. Mm, it's okay. Nothing special. Ugh. This might be a fecal one. <laughs> this is it's creosote again. The trouble is, I keep them all together. I think they're probably cross-pollinating in a in a Roma way. Hmm. Well, that finger's going right up me. Um, uh, <laughs> anyway, right. Jack Vance and the Book of Dreams. The fifth and final of the famous Demon Princes. Also, I've got another one here that's part of a series that I don't have any other books of. That's the problem with me. I just go on the covers. If it looks like a bloody nice cover, I will purchase it. And I was quite intrigued by this great big um, phallic thing. Um, something weird in the background. Okay, now this cover has been bleached. It appears to be bleached to hell. And if you look at the spine... It looks like it's spent a fair amount of time on the on the desert floor. It's just fuck all left of it. Because this image looks like it wraps around normally and all you've got is the, the very darkest, most persistent pigment showing through. Which is a shame, because on the shelf, if I ever get a shelf that will take all my books, it will look like a bone, a uh, bleached bone. So I won't bother reading the uh, blurb again. £1.25 it used to be. So this is, um, yeah, late 70s. It's got to be. It's got, oh, it's early 80s. Okay, 82. Hmm, okay. Are these worth reading? Please tell me they are. So I've bought the buggers now. Well, I bought one of them. Unless I've got some more down there. I don't think so. I was hoping these were standalone novels, but I didn't do any research. Okay, there's a bit of a crease on the back there. It's a bit naughty. Okay, have a look at that um, cover. And if you can, tell me what the hell's going on there. <clears throat> ah. Hmm. Ah, yes. Hmm. Okay, yep. Walnut. But it's slightly sweet, so it's like a walnut biscuit, but I've never had a walnut biscuit before. So, walnut. Right, the next one, I believe, is a standalone book. So I did a tiny bit of research with this one. 
The Grey Prince. Pretty sure this is a standalone, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, know nothing about it though. <laughs> but uh, we've got a fairly odd looking image here. So I assume this is the titular Grey Prince. It does look suitably grey. And we've got various wind powered vessels here with wheels, um, which is interesting. Um, and some flying craft that look quite odd. Um, yeah, it looks almost as though it's bleached, but it's not. I think it's just the colour palette. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll attempt to read this blurb, but there may be some words here that vex me. Right, Corifon is in turmoil when Shane Maddock returns from five years away at school to her beloved morning's wake. It is from this peaceful manor house that her Outka family have ruled the domain ever since the Outka invasion two centuries before. But when her father comes to meet her, his sky car is shot down in an ambush, and the old dra called Muffin she grew up with and loved has now become the Grey Prince, leader of the Redemptionist movement. Should the land be returned to the native Aldrus, and what of the mysterious Ergins? their slaves and the strange process which tames them. Hmm, sounds quite bonkers. Some, yeah, those names I could more or less handle. Um, I particularly liked Muffin. Uh, a little bit of blotching here from damp, some mould perhaps, and a little spattering of blood perhaps. <laughs> hmm, not sure about that, it could be faecal. Uh, right, what else have we got here? 1907, oh, 1982. Original copyright of 74. Mm -hmm. I don't think any other bloodletting has gone on within the pages, fortunately. Yep, nothing else going on in there. Disappointing. Okay, check that out. If you've read this, let me know. Is it worth um, checking out? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Oh, this is already, this is, this is different. This is groundbreaking. This is a different one. Uh, hmm. Oh, I can't quite place that. I think, hmm. <laughs> it smells like my granddad's old car that made me, it used to make me puke instantly because it had it was the it was kind of a mustard coloured car. I can't remember what it was. It might have been a Morris Minor. And as soon as I got in it, it absolutely stank. Um, and that's what made me feel sick. I think it smells of that. So yeah, imminent puking kind of smell. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right. Uh, right, this is the last one, I'm afraid. So this one is Star King, the first of the Demon Prince's novels. So, right, we've got number five and we've got number one. We've bookended the devil. Uh, this one is in, it's in cracking condition, this one. I would say this hasn't been read. Look at that, the spine. Look at it. You could, you could build houses off the square of that. And it's bloody lovely. Um, yes, we've got a very strange structure there. I think it's... It's supposed to be exposed rock, I suppose, but it's it's in the shape of some kind of uh, Fossian ship. Um, volcano in the background and various water pouring all over the place from various fissures. Grafton, published by Grafton. Uh, £2.50, so we're well into the 80s with this one, surely. Um, okay. Well, can I read the... It's the first one. I can probably read this. Okay, this, this will set the tone for what's to come, I, I imagine. Star kings were a race of aliens who disguised themselves as human. They sought only power. Power over the men and women who aroused their lust and contempt. Kerf Gerson had been a peaceful man until the day five star kings descended upon the planet and home of his parents and wiped them out in a vicious object lesson. Now vengeance was his only reason for living, to seek out and destroy the five demon princes who had been turned, who had turned human existence into a waking nightmare. 
The first on his list was Attil Malagate. His name was a meaningless invention. His appearance shifted like the Martian sands, but everywhere Malagate left his trademark of savagery and human suffering. <coughs> Excuse me, and Kurf Gerson was ready to track him down across a thousand stars. Jack Vance is one of the finest writers the science fiction field has ever known. Motherfucker. That's Paul Anderson. Okay, that's a bloody good endorsement there. Look at this. Looks brand new. Hmm. Right. Okay, yes. So, yeah. Late 80s, 1988. Original copyright going back to 63 here. We oh, look at that Galaxy Publishing Corporation. But look at that. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. I don't think that's ever been read. Remarkable condition, actually, for its age. I assumed I, this was like a reproduction, perhaps. It's so good. I didn't pay very much for that either. Crikey. Okay, there we are. Right, oh, cast your eyes over there. I'll sniff it. Mmm. Oh, hello there. I know what this is instantly. It's very sweet. I'm not making this up. It smells of, um, what is it? It's custard powder. What was it? What make was it? Birds. Custard power? powder? It reminds me of when uh, Mum used to make it, spoonfuls of it, um, yellow, bright yellow. Custard. Right, there we are. That's so end of today's book haul. Yeah, just a short and sweet one, uh, though I've probably gone on for a bit. <laughs> Look at that, 27 minutes. Um, I've got a great big book haul to come, um, but I'm going to wait until my lungs have recovered slightly, because we've got, oh, I don't know how many, about 15... Um, uh, Moorcock, yeah. So, yeah, that'll be something to look forward to. Never read any Moorcock either, and uh, yeah, I'll be. Uh, I've got lots of parts of series, so I've been trying to cobble them together. So hopefully, we've got a few. I don't think I have completed any. Um, the Elric one is one that I want to get together. But anyway, let's leave it there. The bells are finished as well, because I told them I'd be stopping around now. <laughs> um, yes, thanks for watching, if you have this far, and um, I'll be back next week with something else. Who knows what it is? Um, yeah, we don't know. Um, yeah, so cheerio. <laughs>